Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today, I'm in Lightroom. And if you've been here for a little while, you know that I'm kind of re-exploring Lightroom and all the features that have been added in the last couple of years since I haven't been using Lightroom in the last couple of years. So over the last couple of months, I've been making some videos about some of the features that I'm excited about and using because it's all kind of new to me, frankly. Um, one of those features is masking. The masking has just come so far and it's so powerful and it's so useful and it's so versatile and it's so you know, insert, you know, compliment here kind of thing. I just, I love it. And I've talked about it in a couple of videos. And in fact, if you want to check out my previous Lightroom videos, there's a playlist right there. But for me, one of the things I'm always kind of playing around with is the light. And I'm always using different kind of masks, you know, a radial mask or a linear gradient or brush mask or whatever to basically, let's call it dodge and burn, right? I'm brightening some things, I'm darkening others. I'm just manipulating the light, trying to create a little bit more visual interest and, and sometimes a little bit more tension, right? Because you get the difference between the, the light parts and the dark parts, which is your contrast. And that's a form of tension in a photo. Well, I've got a photo here. And what I want to do is just create a little bit more dramatic photo. And the way I need to do it in this photo is by manipulating the light. So that's what we're going to do in this video using a specific masking feature which is so awesome and I love it. So here I am in a Lightroom. Now I started like that. You can see that is the before photo and my photo is currently like that. I made some basic adjustments here in the basic little uh, panel. So I increased contrast, I increased the highlights. Uh, they're not even close to blown out. You can see the histogram here and I pulled down the shadows. So I brightened the bright parts, I darkened the dark parts and I'm creating more contrast. The difference between dark and bright is contrast. The thing is, I can only do so much in the basic panel. So in the past, this is where masking has come in. And of course, that's where it's coming in in this video. Masking has given you the ability to target uh, edits to certain specific areas in the photo. In the past, I would use radial mask or linear gradients or even a brush mask. But now they have so many masking features. And the one that I'm most excited about and have been using a lot is luminance range masking. That's what we're talking about here. And I want to show you how I've been using it. So. I did my basic stuff. I'm over here. I click on masking and I go down to range and I go to luminance range. And this won't be a detailed tutorial on all aspects of it. If you would like additional tutorials around luminance range and masking, leave a comment down below and say, yes, Jim, more please, because um, I'm using it a lot and there's a lot of cool things that you can do with it. Um, so what you do is you have this dropper and you come in and what I want to do is I want to create a little bit more contrast in the sky by darkening some of the clouds that are kind of they're, they're bright, but they're not uh, mid, they're not highlights. They're not quite mid-tones. It's kind of this color. So I'm just going to click here and you will see it builds a luminance range mask automatically. And it's selected all those tones that it identifies with what I've just selected. And so now that I've done that, you get this really cool menu over here. And what I want to do is basically refine that a little bit. Now you've got this section here, which you can drag. And as you see, as I'm dragging it, it's changing because what I'm doing is the very left is the dark side, the very right is the bright stuff. And so I'm just dragging this range. The range, by the way, is between these two little bars or handlebars that are on the edge of this little thing that I'm sliding. As I drag that range, I can go to different parts of the photo, right? If I go all the way left, I'm saying, hey, pick up the dark parts. But it started over here because of what I selected with the eyedropper. Now you can also collapse the size of this little uh, window, which is actually what I'm going to do. And that's going to sort of contain the the range of light values that are selected to whatever it is this range is representing here. And again, you can slide it and move it around. So there's a lot that you can do here. But then you've also got these two little triangles. And the more you drag them uh, further away from these little handlebars, the more feathering or more of that gradient zone you get. And if you've uh, seen any of my previous videos about masking in any product, I talk about gradient zones a lot because that is the best way to make sure your edits kind of fade gently and transition smoothly into the rest of your photo. In other words, you don't have an abrupt stop to your edit and then, you know, uh, an abrupt stop of, hey, this was edited and then abrupt stop and then, hey, that was not edited. In other words, it's subtle and gradual and not noticeable, which means it's kind of professional caliber. And so what I'm doing here is just kind of feathering this out. As you can see, if I tighten it up, I've got a really, um, uh, kind of a crisp mask and I want more of a feathered transition. And so all I do is I move this around until I get it kind of looking the way I want to get it. 
and I'm pulling back some of this zone here so that I'm not um, getting too far into the midtones. And I'm going to do something about like that. These all require customization. There's no exact formula unless you just want the complete blacks and et cetera, or the complete whites. But anything here where I start getting into kind of these middle areas, it's all, um, it's a, it's a gray area, uh, no pun intended, but move it around, customize it to your liking. And of course, every image is going to be different. But what I want to do is basically drop the exposure. And you can see what I'm doing now is I'm getting much better control over those areas that in the basic panel, I did highlights and shadows and contrast, and I got what I got, which was, let me show you, I'll turn this off. That's what it looked like. And now it looks like that. So you can see how you can really kind of dodge and burn and increase contrast and create more drama by manipulating the light using these luminance range masks. So I might feather this a little bit or pull that back just a little bit, maybe manipulate this a little bit to go that way, something about like that. And maybe I'll pull back the amount of the exposure drop. I don't want to make it too over the top, but I do want to make it a bit more dramatic and uh, create that contrast that I'm talking about. So before and after, and of course, I'm going to go do this again because I, want, I now want to darken some of the stuff that's already kind of dark. By the way, I'm hovering. You can see where uh, my luminance range mask is applying. Every edit that I'm making, which is really just a negative uh, or a drop in exposure, is applying where the red is showing. I'm going to get another luminance range mask. So I'm going to plus on create new mask, luminance range, and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to get some of these darker pixels here in the bottom left, kind of in the sand. I'm going to click on that and you're going to see I've got a really nice, select. I mean like a darn near perfect selection of the darker parts of the image. I love that and I just think it looks fantastic. And I got to look at my notes here a little bit. Um, I want to maybe pull that a little bit that way, slightly move. No, I think, I think I'm actually going to leave it like that. I'm going to leave it a little bit tighter like that. And I want to drag some of that feathering, something about like that. And all I want to do here is pull down that exposure. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm just creating a little bit more contrast in that foreground, which is going to allow the, the light, especially what's reflected in the sand, to stand out a little bit more. So again, luminance range mask number two here is just creating a little bit more darkening to the areas that were already dark. So if I show you the before, there it is, much less contrast, and after, much more contrast, and probably too much. That's a huge exposure drop, so I'm going to maybe do that about maybe three quarters of a stop, like a 0.75 or whatever. I think that looks pretty nice. But again, before and after, luminance range mask just makes that so easy. Okay, and then one more thing I want to do is actually brighten this area down here where, uh, to me, it's not bright enough. I brightened it kind of up here in the sky, and this is a little bit of a reflection of those brighter parts in the sand, but it's not bright enough. Luminance range mask to the rescue. So plus, create new mask, luminance range, and I'm going to come over here and choose something about like that. And when I click that, you're going to see it picks up a lot of stuff, which means there's a lot of that tonal value in the image. So this is where I would actually uh, stack an edit uh, or a mask on top of this mask. Uh, let me rephrase that. I'll actually make a selection to subtract from the mask that's been created. So this is a subtraction. And in this case, I'm going to go with a linear gradient. And I'm going to come down from the top. And all I'm doing is telling Lightroom, hey, just remove everything that's covered by this linear gradient from that luminance range mask, right? Built a luminance range mask. It grabbed a lot. I did a subtract linear gradient and took away everything that was up in the sky. Now I'm just going to drag this down here a little bit more. And I think that looks pretty good. And while I'm at it, I'm going to click on luminance range. And I just want to look at this uh, little section here where I can adjust these values just to see what I can do. I want to do something about like that, where I'm isolating the, the tonal area that's impacted a little bit better than I was before. I like that feathering, so that looks pretty good. And I want to check this feathering. I don't think I need to do anything there. And let me see about maybe moving this slightly to the right. Yeah, you can see how I'm doing that. It's isolating it even better. So again, I'm getting away by dragging this little section on the luminance range slider there. By dragging that to the right, I'm saying, hey, isolate yourself to the brighter tones in the area that have been selected. And so it's a great way to make these adjustments. And then I'm going to come in and just lift that exposure a little bit. 
and maybe lift those whites a little bit. And all I'm trying to do is get that foreground reflection of the bright uh, section in the sky to look a little bit brighter because it should be kind of reflecting what it's, uh, you know, what is being shown above. And since I brightened the above section, felt like I need to brighten that section. So now if I turn off mask number three, I'm going to show you what I did. There it is before. You can see it was very gray and flat in that sand. And after, now it's popping in the brighter parts of the sand because I used a luminous range mask. So that's why I'm saying these are so powerful and so useful and I'm really done. This is not really a full edit. This is really just a masking kind of a tutorial for lack of a better term on luminance range mask because there may be other things I want to do with the photo. Keep in mind, you can always go back into your mask and click on them and go in and edit these if you want to, which includes changing temperature or tint or adding effects like clarity, D8, whatever it might be. You've got a lot of flexibility because you essentially have a replicated version of the basic panel uh, in each one of these little masking areas. So let me show you what luminance range mask did for my before and after. That's the before photo, pretty flat overall. And as you know, I made those changes, contrast, highlights, and shadows in the basic panel, but I could only get so far with luminance range mask, I was able to target specific tonal areas and come in and create more contrast in those areas. So I could darken the dark stuff, I could brighten the bright stuff, I darkened some of the midtones. I did lots of different things quickly and easily because of the lumens range mask and how easy it is to manipulate that, pick those light values in the image, and then make adjustments according to whatever it is you're trying to do in the image. One more time, before and after. That is the power of luminance range masks in Lightroom. They're amazing. They're absolutely great, and I've been using them a lot. So again, if you would like more tutorials like this, especially around masking or specifically luminance range masks, leave me a comment down below and let me know. I'll be back soon with more Lightroom tutorials. Thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, adios.